After standing up the LogStorm virtual machine, you'll want to start collecting logs from your security devices. You'll also want to enable rules to start tracking potential incidents. This tutorial will show you these basics and a few other tips to help get you started. To start using the LogStorm interface, open your web browser and enter the IP address of your LogStorm server, connecting through HTTPS. From here, click on the Launch Client button, which will open up the Java app and prompt you with a login. The default username will be admin and the password is change on install, all one word with the O and I capital. Initially, there will be no data on the home screen, but after we add log collection devices and start enabling meta rules, that will change. In the meantime, we'll begin by changing the admin password. The Administration tab is where you can add new users and modify existing ones. Click here, highlight the Admin User, and then find the Change Password button below. Enter your new credentials in the dialog box here. Once the default credentials have been changed, we can begin adding new security devices. This is done through the Assets tab. For most devices, such as firewalls or IDS, logging is collected through the syslog protocol. As an example, I will configure a Linux server to send its logs to this instance of LogStorm. While the basics are the same for most devices, please consult the Black Stratus website should you need vendor instructions for a particular device. First, we will need to tell LogStorm which networks in our environment we'd like to monitor. Click the Networks button and add the IP ranges where your devices are located. For the IP range, you can either use CIDR notation or explicitly define a range. Note the PAD checkbox listed here. PAD stands for Passive Auto Discovery and is how LogStorm will be able to determine which devices are sending us logs. Now that our network's been defined, I can go ahead and configure Linux to forward its syslog. To do this, I will use an SSH client to connect to my Linux machine. Once logged in, I will edit the etsy syslog.conf file. At the end of this file, I'm going to add a line telling Linux to forward all of its logs to the IP address of LogStorm. After saving this file, I will restart the syslog service on the Linux server. Notice that as soon as the syslog service comes back up, the Candidates button in the LogStorm GUI has turned blue. This indicates that LogStorm has automatically discovered the new logs coming to the system. I'm going to send a few more device logs to our system, and then we'll continue the process. Now that we have some devices sending information to LogStorm, we can click on the Candidates button and add them as assets. There are two types of devices in this window, Reporting Assets and Assets. Reporting Assets are the machines sending us log information. Assets are IP addresses that appeared in log messages indirectly, such as a source or destination in a firewall message. If possible, LogStorm will also detect the type of device sending us logs. This makes it easy for us to confirm assets. All we need to do is highlight the entry we want to add and click Configure, followed by Create Device. The product will already be highlighted for you if it's been detected, so we can just click OK here. On this window, we can add more detail about the device, such as hostname, location, and owner. We can also give a brief description. When you're done with the details, click OK to add the device. Your new entry will be in the asset list. Repeat this procedure for any other devices you'd like to add. For entries that don't have a product specified, such as our Linux server, you can select one manually when you click on Create Device.
If you would like for the non-reporting assets to be in your asset list, you can also use Configure Create Host. For now, we'll close this window and continue with the tutorial. Now that we have some assets, we can click on the Topology button to map them out for our home screen. All of our entries are in a line by default, but we can go ahead and edit that using a predefined arrangement. Click on the Tree button and select one of the default layouts, such as organic. This is a much better representation of the network, so we'll save this diagram. You'll notice that all of our assets revolve around the original network that we specified when we first clicked on the Networks button. Now, when I go back to the home screen, you'll notice our newly modified topology in the bottom window. We are now collecting logs from our assets. At this point, we can go ahead and configure meta rules. Not surprisingly, these are located in the Rules tab. LogStorm comes with 66 predefined rules, which cover standard security practices. Each of the rules was built using one of 13 templates, depending on what the rule is trying to trigger on. For example, the excessive failed logins by source IP is a rule that uses the authentication threshold template. You can show the details of this rule by highlighting the entry. Below, you will see a general description of the rule. Clicking on the Configuration tab will give us the parameters for the rule. In this case, we're trying to trigger on a brute force attempt, so we are looking for failed logins. If I see three failed logins within a 60 second time frame, and it's all coming from the same source IP address, this rule is going to trigger. We can change the parameters of this rule if we wish by editing the rule in place. Here I'm going to reduce the time frame from 60 seconds to 15 and click Apply. You can reset any changes you've made by clicking on the Restore Defaults button. I'm using this one rule as an example, but as you can see there are many rules that capture many different types of security events. Take a look at the predefined meta rules and see which ones would be useful in your environment. You can also create custom rules using one of the templates. For now, I'm going to Control A to select all of the rules and click the Enable button to allow them to start processing the events. In our simulation here, you'll notice incidents triggering right away in the left hand side of the screen. Some of the rules in our list will also have a red activity light. This means that the rule is processing, though it doesn't guarantee that an incident will trigger. To go into specifics on the incidents that fired, we can click on the Incidents tab. When I highlight an incident, its details appear below. We will also have a brief description and what your response should be to investigate the activity. To see the raw messages which triggered this alert, I can click on the Threads tab. Now the incident I've highlighted is Telnet followed by SSH activity. So when I double click on the first thread, that'll be the first half of the equation. You can see in each of the rows that one source IP address has been talking to a destination on port 23, or the Telnet port. Double clicking on any row in the thread will give me the actual message as I received it from the device. In this case, we're looking at a NetScreen firewall log. We can also see how LogStorm categorizes the type of message, in this case, ACL allow. All of the details are located in the raw message field. Clicking on next event will cycle through the messages in the thread. Continuing with our example, double clicking on the second thread will give us the second half of our equation. In this case we'll see very similar activity except over port 22 for SSH. We have a couple of options with what we can do once an incident is fired. The first is setting up a notification. Clicking on the notification button will show us the one default we have in place already, which is a severity greater than or equal to 7 will email all users of LogStorm. Aside from emailing users, we have a couple of other options to get information out of the system, such as SMS, SNMP, and Syslog. I can also set up additional notifications by clicking on the new button and then selecting a new set of criteria. Here we have a couple of different ways we can set up notifications, either through time frame, or a specific rule, or we can mix and match. Another option for incidents is to add them to a ticket using our case management system. 
By clicking on the Add to Case button, we can create a new case and assign a user to work on the incident. We can leave notes for who's assigned to work the case, and all the incidents that you add will be attached in the Cases tab. So you can double click and get to the threads just like we did earlier. If I have any other attachments I'd like to add to the case, such as packet captures or reports, I can do that as well. You've now seen what LogStorm can do with logging information once it's been correlated and incidents have fired. Now let's take a look at the reporting capabilities. LogStorm has several different report templates you can use that generate through a Crystal Reports backend to give you crisp, clean looking reports. Each of the subsections gives you several different options for reporting. As an example, the Compliance section gives you several different standards with templates for each. For now, I'll stick to the basics, which are in our Message Search Reports section. These three entries give us raw message reporting as LogStorm sees it from the devices. When I highlight any template, the right-hand window gives us options to edit what we want to see in the report. I'm going to increase the number of messages we will see in the report and change the time frame for our search. Because I ran a category report, we see not only the raw messages, but what category types LogStorm classified the events as. We can cycle through the report here in our browser or export it to a few file formats, like PDF. We also have the option of running these reports on a schedule in the background. You can create your own custom schedules and then select them from the drop down here. Any schedules would appear in the Report Status tab. That covers most of the basic features you'll find within LogStorm. You'll now notice as we jump back to the home screen that we have a lot more insight into what's happening on your network. For more information about features not covered in this tutorial, please refer to the documentation found on the Black Stratus website. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your new LogStorm server.